Hi folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome back to Harris Farm and Heart of the Home. I love having you come to visit. And today I have another visitor. My granddaughter Tori is here. Um, Tori is Ansley Victoria Ruth Taylor, who happens to be my oldest granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. Yes. And your heritage comes from me, which is Southern, 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 <laughs> and German, which yes. is your other grandmother. And today we're going to share our mom's recipe, aren't we? Mm hmm We are. Now, what did she call this? Spinach and chicken? Um, yeah, just chicken and spinach. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, the first time your mom made it at my house, I didn't think Nicholas would eat it because he wasn't much on spinach. He loves this. Everyone does. Everyone I mean, does. Even if you're like spinach, eh, mm -hmm. it's great. It's chicken, cream cheese, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese, spinach, a little garlic, and beef bouillon. Simple ingredients. Simple ingredients. Do you think Omar got this from somebody or do you think she just made it up? Um, I think she probably had a whole bunch of stuff just lying around and she did like you do, Nanny. What can we make out of this? That's right. And then, that's right. And you know, that it ended up working. That sounds like Omar because yeah. she was she was she grew up in the in the war, didn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah. She was in Germany during the really bad times. And um, and very, very tough a tough life and yeah. it was hard and, and she reflected that as she got older you could tell because she saved everything oh yeah <laughs> Tori I save everything yeah. I did I wasn't in that war and I save everything it happens that's a know. good trait it it's happens. a good thing it's a good thing now the chicken has we baked our chicken breast mm -hmm. and we diced them up now your mom does this another way for company she just splits the chicken breast and right. then puts the spinach and cheese in the mm -hmm. middle of it but she also does it as a casserole, and we're going to do it as a casserole. I think it's kind of a time issue, you know, and presentation. Like, do you want to do it more just kind of like together as a casserole and, right. you know, like family style, or do you want to go up a notch? So. That's right. That's right. And today, we're at Harris Farm. Yeah. We're just out here <laughs> in the country, and you and I are going to have a good lunch. So, yeah. we, yeah, we don't have It'll to go nice. with the foo-foo. Yeah, this is going to be easy. Now, our spinach is cooking, and to this, now, we've got about three and a half or four cups of chicken mm -hmm. that we've cut up in chunks and we're going to add the cheeses to that and the um, how long does it cook about 25 minutes maybe yeah you can usually tell like when your cheese is good and melted mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you just know, you know. And, and what would you serve that with a salad uh, I would do it with salad I wouldn't want to do anything heavy because it is a very filling dish it is, you know it I'd is. stay away from like starches and pastas and things like that like maybe right. some nice mixed vegetables to go mm -hmm. with it that would be, would good. be yummy that would be so. good you know, your daddy, who's so skinny, yeah. <laughs> and I laugh about this all the time, that is a two-carb boy, doesn't he? He thinks you're supposed to have cream potatoes and cream corn oh, on yeah. the same plate. Oh, yeah. And we keep telling him you don't do that. You right. don't do that. But anyway, now we're going to strain the spinach, and then we're going to assemble these ingredients, and we'll get it ready to go in the oven. Okay, now, Tori, you have the chopped chicken and the spinach, and we're going to add the cream cheese to this. And we're using one 12 ounce container of cream cheese. And it's softened. And it is the softened kind. I love this. It's a fairly new product and it is awesome. It is awesome. Gonna add our cheeses. And the cheeses all melt together, don't they? This is, yeah. there you go. Wow. I was surprised that Nick liked this, but man, he loves it. Loves it. We're going to add about half the mozzarella, then we're going to put the rest of it on the top of it. There you go. That's a lot of spinach and chicken, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It is a lot. And it's one of those things, you could make it tonight, bake it in the morning, and take it to the office for lunch. It's actually better the second day. I it's think one so of those too. dishes yeah. that, you know, kind of like lasagna or something like that, it mm -hmm. just gets better. It does. So. It does. Now, when Omar made this, I know she used to send it home with y'all. Yeah. And you could always tell when your dad came up the driveway, he was smiling because Omar had sent food home with yep. him. Yep. She was a sweet lady. Sweet lady. There you go. So I think it's pretty, pretty well mixed up. It's getting there. A little bit more so the cheese will melt a little bit more. That spinach was hot, wasn't it? It was really hot. Now, I think this will probably make two pans. We'll, we'll fill this one, then I have a smaller one, too. Smells good. Now, it has a little bit of garlic, spinach, mm -hmm. beef bouillon, the two cheeses, and cream cheese, and then our chunky chicken. It's got several food groups in it, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it's pretty uh, well-rounded. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you were talking about what to serve with it. I think um, glazed carrots would be good. Mm -hmm. I love glazed carrots. Carrots are one of those things, either you like them or you don't, and yeah. I love them. Do you like them? Um, I do when they're sweet, uh -huh. you know. I um, am a bottomless pit for sweets, so anything with a little bit of flavor, I'm gonna go for. And you and I like spinach. I like it raw, I like it in yeah. salads. I like it any way you wanna do it. I like spinach. When I was little, I didn't like spinach. It's one of those tastes that I kinda grew into. Right. And I was eating this and I had no clue, you know? Uh -huh. And then as I got older, I was like, so what exactly is this? And then I was like, oh, maybe it's not so bad no, after all. No, you know how you develop taste? I can remember mother cooked Brussels sprouts. I could not do Brussels sprouts. I can now, but... Um, I, I still can't. Well, no. that was one of those things. Couldn't mm -hmm. do Brussels sprouts. But I like spinach, and I like um, cauliflower. I like broccoli, so I like most things that are good for you. Now, we're going to stick this in the oven for about 20 or 25 minutes mm -hmm. on 350. Then we're going to hang it on the porch and enjoy the time while it cooks. Now you're still working and still going to college. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get somewhere in the future. Well, so. I bet. I <laughs> bet you get where you're going. I bet you do. Now let me stick this in the oven. Have you got your watch? Can you time it for us? I do. Good. About 20 minutes. Now, um, when you go back to school, will you be back in Atlanta? You're on the radio now. Aren't you doing a little I DJing? Am. Um, I'm also the music director, so I get to go out and meet lots of local artists and, you know, get out and communicate with them like that, as well as have my own show every week. Oh, that's week. great. So it's a lot of fun. That's fun. And, yeah. and you're out on Saturday afternoons? Well, that? we're not actually sure. Um, it used to be Wednesday afternoons, and so um, with the new rotation, we're not really sure. Okay. So we'll see what happens, but, but you can check but it out. But you're looking forward to going back to school in the fall, and whatever the fall brings. Yeah. It'll be I new and it'll be, be challenging, and you'll have a ball. Yeah. And you know, that's part of life, new and challenging and traveling. We're going to talk about yeah. traveling a little bit later, because <laughs> yeah. you and I have done some traveling together. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I bet the spinach casserole will be ready, and I bet it'll be good. I think it'll be good. We'll be right back now. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Harris Farm. Tori and I have our spinach casserole in the oven, and we're going to visit with you a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about creativity, because my mom was an artist. Tori is going to college to be an artist, and Lori went to college to be a photographer, and I like artsy things. I like picking up a $2 mirror and turning it into a mirror that I hang in my guest bathroom. I took some rope, some flowers, a little bit of greenery, and there you go. And it's in my tiny bathroom, and I love it. And it was $2 at a yard sale. Yeah. And then I bought 50 cents worth of rope. <clears throat> and if you have a little bit of artistic talent, I have a little bit, you have a lot. You have a lot. Everybody has a little bit, though. Everybody has a little yeah. bit. Now, mm -hmm. what do you girls like? You both like photography, mm -hmm. don't you? We do, uh, both of us. It was interesting in Alaska to see we would stand there and be mm -hmm. taking the same shots, but then they turned out so different. Yeah. Exactly. Just a different eye. Um, I love doing video work and, you know, working with cameras and things, whether right. it's still or or, you know, tape. And so. you both like the media end of it. You like the radio yeah. and you like the TV. I like radio too. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I worked in radio in college and I've, I've told Tori, I'm like, you're going to have a blast with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. And you know, I like, everybody likes their own music. I like the, the 60s music. I love the Beach Boys. I love gospel music. Everybody mm -hmm. has their own thing. And it's great to share that. And yeah. you know, if you go on a trip, share everybody's music. Everybody has their certain interests and certain likes. And it's like my mom, she could paint anything. Mother could take a frying yeah. pan and paint it and make it killer cute. And I'm like, how did you do that? You know, but just, just look within yourself and find something you're good at, whether it's growing flowers or photography or the videos that you shot up on the mountain, you mm -hmm. know, the kind of thing that, that you know you're good at and you want to share that talent with other people. And um, I happen to be good at cooking. And Just I have, a little, right? <laughs> I'm good at cooking, and I love fundraising. I love yeah. doing things for Habitat. I love um, going out into the public and talking to people. I go to schools and talk to kids about drugs, and that's something that hit hard with us. And, and when I first started doing this, I thought, I can't go stand in front of all these people and talk to them about drugs. I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to handle that, and I handle their questions. And 
um, almost every family in the world has been affected by drugs, and ours oh. was. And and I took my talent. I walked in one day with a cookbook to a classroom. And they all raised their hand, and I said, what do I do that I love? They said, you cook on TV. And I said, guys, you're right. So everybody has a God-given talent. And use that talent, whether it's photography or mm -hmm. you. I bet you could write poetry, because you're very deep. I don't know about that. <laughs> I bet you <laughs> could. I bet you could. I, I like to tell a story. Yeah. Just yeah. plain and simple, whether and, and it's you with do, a photo or Now, you video. do a travel column, too, mm -hmm. for North Georgia Now magazine. Yep. And you love doing that. It's a lot of fun. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? You get to go places and then right, write about it. Right. So and share and share the experience. Yeah. So and you know, one of my favorite heart of the homes was our trip to Anthony's in Buckhead, mm -hmm. because you showed up. We were in this home that was when was it built? Seventeen forty or something. Yeah. And moved so. from uh, Washington, Georgia to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And we shot a story that will always be one of my favorite because it was in that building and yeah. the history, the history. And that's yeah. one thing you went in Savannah. Didn't mm -hmm. you learn a lot of history about Savannah? Um, yeah, I learned a lot about Savannah that I wasn't aware of. You know, like you could just go out and a lot of times if I did have downtown, like downtime, I would just go and walk around the squares and mm -hmm. just read. Like, I mean, it's everywhere. Uh -huh. You know, Savannah's uh -huh. really good about keeping you informed, but... It just wasn't for me. Well, <laughs> and we're know, so yeah. glad to have you yeah. back in it Atlanta. We're so, much yeah. so happy. It yeah, just we can me. meet you for lunch now, which exactly. is great. Yeah, you know yeah. that is yeah. nice. Like I, I wanted to move away, and I wanted to see that I could do it on my own. But I need family around. That's right. Me. That yeah. and you know? family is so, so important. And and that's one thing about Harris Farm. We are the seventh generation. And and when my husband, we were able to buy this from our relatives that had inherited it. He was so excited because. Family and history is very important to yeah. us, mm -hmm. and and each week as you come to visit us on Heart of the Home, we'll be in the new house, we'll be at the farm, we'll be visiting other people's houses. But keep in mind, guys, family and friends, they're always important, and you always want to do something special. Um, you and I have always gotten along, and and, yeah. and I think it's because you're so much like my mom. <laughs> you you remind so me so creative, much of my yeah. mother, and I love it. I love well, it. Thank I, you, Nana. Uh, many times now, I'll be typing something, and I'll say, how do you spell that? I wish I could call my mama, you know? Yeah. Um, family is so important, so I think that's why we adopted Mama Lucy because it was at a time in <laughs> our life so. that, that yeah. you know I lost my mom to cancer, uh, lost my husband to cancer at the same time, and you and I dealt with that together. Mm -hmm. So, but keep your family close, and keep your memories close, and make new mm -hmm. memories, guys. Mm -hmm. Just make new memories, and and whether it's with a camera or a recorder, whether you do poetry, Mother was a great poet. At the end of the day, like, the memories are what you're going to have. That's you exactly know? right. And to share it with your family and the people that you love, like, it's an amazing feeling. That's yeah. right. That's you right. Know. The trip we made to Alaska was such a variety. We were all different ages, <laughs> all different upbringings, you know. And we all together realized that God did that for all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and we all enjoyed yep. it in different ways. Yep. And it was like the eagles. Oh, I'm such a sucker for oh, eagles. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> and and when I saw the eagles up close and them eating out of their hands, you just that that'll get you in touch with God. Yeah. That'll get you mm -hmm. in touch with God. And and the flowers and you know y'all didn't get to see the flowers like I have in past trips. The flowers in Alaska are phenomenal. So we're going back. We're going back. Okay. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was hard to talk you into that. Yeah. And and we learned book your ticket ahead of time. Yep. Book your ticket ahead of time yes. and go. Everybody can go to Alaska once in a lifetime because it is a lifetime trip. It, I mean, it, it kind of changes your life once it you does. go and come it back. Does. Yeah. It it's, does. It's a place that's been yeah. kind of preserved and yeah. on its own. It's magical. That's right. It, it really, really is. is. Mm -hmm. It really is. And and friends we made there, now we keep in touch with, yeah. which is a great thing because we made some awesome friends. And, yeah. and guys, you know, make friends, create memories, um, whether it be a, a $2 mirror you turn mm -hmm. into something that you love. Remember, folks, the memories that you create today will be here forever. When you're gone, like my mom's gone, the memories so precious and so wonderful you never forget them so remember leave special memories now we're going to leave you for just a minute and then we'll be back with our spinach and chicken casserole coming out of the oven and we're going to have another guest miss lucy van doren we're going to make her famous summer potato salad come right back now hi folks we're back and i've been joined mama lucy and tori are here and you know what we're making something we all love and what is this 
Summer potato salad. Summer potato salad, and it is summer, and the fruits and vegetables are coming in. Mm -hmm. These are new potatoes, right. red potatoes, and then just a, a host of ingredients. Onions, peas, frozen peas, carrots, broccoli, tomatoes, and I love these red peppers. Right. Love them, love them. And we found at Darnell Farms, you know, they're the same price as the green ones. So, now Tori, you've never had a garden, but I have. No. And having a garden makes you appreciate Darnell Farms, believe me. You pull up and you walk in and you buy what they have grown. So you like all these ingredients, don't you, Tori? Um, I do. I'm a little bit weary about the red onion. Well, the red onion, is, it's got a kick. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And I think it's good for you, too. So it is good for you. Now, we did, what, 14 to 16 potatoes? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do more depending on how many people in your right. family. Tori, let's start adding the ingredients. Well, these potatoes are really just cooked, just almost done. They're not That's right. done, That's but right. if, you, if you overcook them, it's not really good. That's right. It's right. almost a crunchy, right. isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Everything about this has a crunch right. to it, and mm -hmm. it, it just has a kick. I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, we've added peas. These are frozen peas. Mm -hmm. right. And then the green peppers, and Tori's adding the onions that she's not okay. sure about, but her <laughs> nanny loves them. Well, I so. know that all these colors together are looking really pretty. Though. Looking really yeah. good. So. And then the broccoli, tiny, tiny pieces of broccoli. Well, I find that uh, anything you have in your refrigerator, just anything that's crunchy and crispy. Right. Just chop it up and put it in there. And, and keep in mind, don't get your potatoes right. done. Your potatoes are almost, have that little kick. You don't want them done. Now we're adding a little bit of relish and we're gonna add the dressing. And, and the key to this, guys, is we're not using my favorite mayonnaise today. We're using <laughs> Hidden Valley Ranch dressing. Right. And that's the difference in this. I, uh, I ran up on that by mistake. I didn't you were out of mayonnaise. Was out of mayonnaise. <laughs> that's so right. that's what I had and that's what I used and I like it, you know, real good. It's, it's really, really good. Nice. Okay, Mama Lucy, you wanna stir that up? If I can find my spoon. Do we put the whole bottle of um, ranch in there? It, it for the this size bottle? bottle, Tori, it takes just about right. a bottle of ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then guys, I'm gonna add a little kick of red pepper. Just a little. This is we should have named this kicking potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is kicking good. Yeah, that's enough, I think. Okay. <laughs> and just a little bit of garlic powder. Oh, uh, I put the garlic powder in it already. Already? Okay. You weren't watching. There you what go. Tori, does that look great? Yeah, it's, it looks really beautiful. And I love my bowl. I love mm -hmm. that bowl. That's such a good bowl to use for things like this. I think it's Need a little ready. bit more, Lucy? Well, I don't think so, really. You sure that's okay? Okay. You can put some more in and there. And you know, one right. thing we decided is this is better. Just let it sit in the fridge, what, an hour or so? About an hour. Mm -hmm. And then serve this. And we're going to serve it with Tori's grandmother's mm -hmm. spinach and chicken casserole. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great summer meal. And then we have a really, really light dessert. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> not. <laughs> not light. Not no. light dessert. No. Let's Sometimes. Here. Okay, make let's it, do that. Make, make it look pretty. pretty. Right. I'll hold it. You. Okay. You did. Lucy, this is beautiful. And it is one of my favorite recipes. I'm so glad you dreamed this up. <laughs> you know. It just happened. Great minds work <laughs> together, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, that is so pretty. We'll have plenty left for tomorrow. That's right. That's right. Or to share with your neighbors. You know, I love, I have a great neighbor, little Randy. And I always show up and give him some things if we have dinners or something. Now, what did Mama Lucy teach me? Presentation, presentation, that's presentation. Right. <laughs> that's what makes it pretty. That's right. That's right. right. Is this clover? No, this is chives. Okay. And this is... Um, parsley? Parsley and parsley. Uh, that's really going to be a seed in a few more weeks. Okay. It'll be a parsley seed. But right now, it's just a pretty little decoration. Well, that is beautiful. And we're going to put the tomatoes on the side mm -hmm. because we decided we didn't want to stir them up and maybe mush them. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to decorate the side with the tomatoes. That is really pretty. And it's the kind of thing in the summer. It's just a great mm -hmm. idea. I think it's very, very good. It's Show very up at church with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. you can just take anything you have left over in the refrigerator right. and drop it up. and. Now your grandmother made German potato salad, didn't she? It was it was a lot different from this. Yes, though. it was. It <laughs> a was a lot different. It was. Didn't you use hot bacon grease in German potato <clears throat> yeah, salad? Yeah, um, it is served hot. It's not like the usual American right. way of serving it cold or right. chilled. And um, yeah, you use a couple of secret family recipes. 
right? You know, to go and you know, I, when I make potato salad, I do the same recipe that my sister makes, which is just the potatoes, onions, pickle relish, mustard, and mayonnaise. Just yeah. the old timey <laughs> southern potato salad, which your German daddy happens to love. So it's yeah. it's kind of funny. Everybody has different taste, and um, my tastes are definitely for this one. We all voted this. Lucy, you have won the award. Thank you. Yours is the best potato salad ever. And remember, guys, this recipe and all our other recipes are on our website, www.heartofthehomeatetc.com. And you can look at our segments. They're 18 months old. We have some of the old segments on there. We have my grandmother's chicken and dumpling segment that was one of our very first. Mm -hmm. And the first segment we ever shot was here in this kitchen with Lily when she was only a year and a half old and she was eating baby pizzas. Now, how many baby pizzas have you eaten? Oh, quite a few. Yes. I've got a few more years on Lily, well, so I've you're, stocked them away. You're 20 yeah. and we've been making them all your life and now we're making them for Lily's life. Yeah. So, um, share your family recipes. And, and remember guys, write them down and, and make sure that you pass them down because your grandmother actually left you recipes written in German, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, and now I'm kind of struggling, you know, trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. My dad and I, we go back and he's like, I just, I don't know, you that's know? Right, so that's right, that's right. So it's, you know, yeah, like definitely pass them down verbally and like show how to make that's them. That's right, that's right. And, and the easiest so. way to do is share an afternoon with your granddaughter. Yeah. I loved having you here, Tori. It's been so much fun. And we welcome you to come every week to Harris Farm. We're gonna be at Harris Farm, we'll be at Harris Acres, we'll be traveling. We might go to Mama Lucy's house. That would be good. We may go to Mama Lucy's yep. house, y'all. We want you to stay tuned, and we want you to visit with us often. So keep in touch with us, guys. We'll be back. Bye-bye. Folks, I loved having you at Harris Farm. Love this porch. Love this farm. I love cooking. Um, I also love gospel music. Right now, I'd love to share one of my favorite songs with you. Just sit back rest a little, rock a little, and enjoy. Um, I love this gospel music and I love to share it with you. Stay tuned again every week. Come back to Harris Farm. I'll be here and I hope you will be too. Bye-bye. I believe it though Christ who died that day on Calvary's mountain is living today and never seeds in heaven above. I believe it he opened up that day a healing fountain where the wounded and weary soul find rest in his wonderful love. I believe it he died for me and you. I believe it his love will carry me through. And he walks with me. Along the way, I believe that He rose up from the grave. I believe that He still has power to say, and He's coming back. Hallelujah! Some wonderful day. Yeah.